Good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm very happy to, to be with you in this uh, technical webinar, which is really uh, through our uh, future instructor and two eminent people, and they will speak about certain specific subjects which is very, very important to our sport. We have memory and we have Donald. And of course, we have our main pillar, Sharif Shemeli, our president of uh, Coaches Commission. Uh, we have Ben Hameda, our genius director of our academy, and he's really doing a good job for all, all of us. And of course, Hisham, and Hisham is dynamic. I will not forget, of course, Enzo, our developing officer, fantastic guy. And I hope that Mondi will be following us and Tariq, and we will give a good example of how the all people can cooperate and teach each other and help each other. At the end, our people, coaches, players, and even National Federation president can be benefit from our technical support. And I'm really enjoying all what you are doing, guys. So please go ahead, good luck, and I will be enjoying watching you and your experience, and uh, uh, good luck. Have, have a nice evening, and I will comment later. Okay, bye-bye. Good luck, everybody. Thank you, President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, okay. President. Bye-bye. See you. Okay, guys. Uh, First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Alwani uh, for giving us the opportunity and also thank also I would like to thank the board and I would like to thank our colleagues in CVB and I would like to welcome uh, the, the new uh, uh, two uh, instructors uh, uh, my sister uh, Memory and my brother Donut. And I would like to thank also Mr. Ben Hameda, my big brother, uh, for what he's doing for, for Africa in volleyball. Also Enzo and Sham and all uh, the group in CVB. Uh, on the other side, I would like to say that I'm very proud, uh, especially today, because we are uh, on the road. We are doing a very good, uh, I mean, job and uh, we will take a new step uh, for the future to cover one of the parts uh, missing from our work uh, in, uh, in developing volleyball in Africa. Uh, today, I think we will touch uh, one very important, uh, uh, I mean, part, uh, the, the physical fitness. And we have uh, two of uh, experts with us and they are we are proud that because they are from Africa. And also I'm uh, very proud that we, uh, for the first time, uh, touching this uh, uh, very important uh, subject. Uh, uh, also, I would like to, to thank uh, Zone 6, because they have the initiative always. And I believe that uh, uh, in my uh, instructor uh, career, Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, back. Can you hear me, please? Yes. Enzo? Yes. Enzo, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I, I would like to say that in my instructor career, I, 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 I have been to, to Zimbabwe two times, and I, I think uh, it's one of the, the, the near countries from uh, my heart because I saw people there are working very hard, but they need the, the, someone to help them to open the door. And now I think we, we start to have from Zone 6 and from Zimbabwe and other countries there, uh, as, uh, I mean, some good instructors for the future. And also, uh, I'm very proud of that. Also, I would like to, to welcome uh, our brother, uh, Marco Perez, he, because he joined us. He's one of the legends in, in beach volleyball. Uh, he's from Brazil. 
uh, I'm very happy that uh, uh, one of the, the, the big uh, important coaches uh, attend one of our uh, webinars. That's why, I mean, uh, now we are uh, very proud that our work start to, I mean, uh, to appear. And uh, I would like to welcome him and say hello, Marco. And uh, we are very happy that you are joining us. Marco now is the head coach of uh, beach volleyball in Spain, uh, beach volleyball national teams in Spain. And he's one of the legends, uh, as I told you, in, in beach volleyball all over the world. He's from Brazil. Okay, guys. Yes, thank I you. Think, uh, hello, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Mohamed Ben Hameda, could you please, uh, the floor for you, if you would like to, to, to say anything? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm uh, so glad to be here. And I uh, would like to, to learn a lot tonight with you guys. Thank you very much. Just, uh, I just want just to say, this. just to to uh, to congratulate uh, CAVB uh, on that uh, such uh, kind of webinars. And uh, I think that today, with this uh, webinar, I think that we will reach the whole aspects of uh, training and of uh, athlete preparation. This is one. Second. I am proud and I will be glad uh, to account uh, memory uh, as one of our, uh, I mean, our instructors and one of our uh, member and for sure that she will uh, join the academy. The third thing is that, uh, welcome Marco again. We are so happy to have you with us and I think that will, the, the history will continue with us. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you. Thank you guys. Okay, guys, I think we can start now and we, we are waiting for you, Memory and, uh, uh, and Donald. Uh, I don't know who will start and the floor for you. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, Memory, you can start. Uh, good evening, um, everyone. Um, good morning or good afternoon. You know how people are in different areas of the world can be watching. Um, welcome to our webinar today. First, I would like to acknowledge um, the president, Dr. Elwani, um, who's also the VP for um, FIVB. I would also like to acknowledge uh, the director of the academy, um, uh, Mohammed. I also want to acknowledge um, the com coach, com uh, coaches commissioner, um, Sherif, um, Mrs. Mondi, the executive director, and um, the technical staff, and uh, Mr. Marco, and um, Mr. Enzo, um, I say welcome all to our webinar today. Um, so today we are presenting on um, volleyball um, physical condition, or which we've uh, entitled an integrated um, physical training approach. So when we say a uh, physical conditioning integrated approach, we're talking about um, a physical conditioning program that aims at improving everything that is necessary for volleyball players to perform at the highest um, level. So we're basically putting in all the aspects that are related to the training of volleyball, be it the components of fitness, anything that is physical that is needed um, uh, for conditioning. That's uh, the integration part. So, um, the road to Donald, performance. Donald, please. please, Donald, could you please uh, uh, take the, the microphone near from your mouse, please, to, to, to make the voice more clear, because we will make translation after. Okay, uh, to, to, to get. Uh, um, if you, uh, you could just speak up a bit. OK. Am I clear enough now? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we say uh, the road to performance uh, normally is started by having a base of a physical conditioning of the body in volleyball. And we've got um, issues like stability, issues like mobility that come into aspect and all this, they lead up to, um, to the completeness of athletes. And hence, 
a complete physical training program must be completed. Right, so our objectives today, uh, we're going to talk about the training components um, that are needed in terms of um, volleyball analysis. We're going to look at uh, the integrated fitness approach, uh, the training approach. We are going to define the training components that are involved in the training of volleyball. We're going to talk about um, the assessment test of these training components. Um, for teams or for us as coaches and technical staff to be able to assess and to know how to train our athletes in terms of volleyball, we need to um, have tests. So we're going to talk about the test of these training components. And lastly, today, we're going to talk about um, periodization to say in the whole plan of our training of volleyball throughout the season, uh, where does physical conditioning um, start? Where does physical conditioning end? Right, uh, first up, we have um, a demand profile, right? The demand profile is basically will vary from um, coach to coach, but we have generally the profiles, um, the components of fitness, which um, could be agility, speed, flexibility, endurance, balance, coordination, strength, and power. And we're saying, before you even start looking at uh, the physical conditioning, how you're gonna start preparing, you have to make a demand profile that you will sort of um, put in as a percentage to say, I feel like in my team, um, we'll use 20% agility, 15% speed. And this will then help you in terms of planning um, the activities uh, when it then comes to the training aspect and structuring of the exercises and the components. So uh, physical conditioning, refers uh, generally to the development of physical fitness through adaptation of the body. So what we're saying is each player, when they come back from where they are coming from, be it off season, be it it's a new player, they are coming in with their body structure that needs to adapt to the needs of the sport of volleyball. And that body has in its, in, in its different forms, has to be exposed to various systems and various exercise programs. And this is what in general we call physical conditioning when you are preparing um, our athletes um, to start exercise. At times before you even talk about skill, you literally have to physical conditioning them. You have to get them through um, the starting of the event. And this uh, physical conditioning, it can start during off season where you ensure that the athletes are prepared and ready for the season's performance. Some athletes, after a season, uh, when a season break starts, they'll be given um, training programs that ensures that um, they go through with the physical conditioning. So it's still part of physical conditioning. Next slide. So there are requirements. First, I have mentioned that the requirements are physical. So these physical uh, requirements, which are the aspects of, component, of components of fitness that we'll talk about, have effects on the players. And the effects that they have on the players will then cause um, certain effects on the execution of the skills by the players. And overall, this is what contributes um, to improved performance when we talk about volleyball performance. Next slide. Right, um, someone would ask why physical conditioning? Um, generally physical conditioning contributes to a better performance because all the components of aspects are, are involved. We are ensured um, that there will be better performance by the athletes it causes for self-confidence on and off the court. Whenever athletes know that they are not well prepared or whenever as coaches we know that um, our athletes and our players are not well prepared, there's a confidence aspect that is um, taken away from the team. And it increases the strength and the resilience as well. So when we talk about strength, we're talking about now during competition time, the need to fight 
the need to compete. So that increases because physical conditioning, the physical conditioning base has been set. It improves the cognitive skills. We're talking about the aspects during the game that require the athletes to think, that require the athletes to uh, make certain decisions regarding their play. And this also um, is a benefit that comes with uh, good physical conditioning. It improves technique, it improves power. These are most of the things that are basic, most of the things that we know that we can literally see um, from the start of the physical conditioning, um, as we keep going up the ladder, you find that it's easy for you to teach certain techniques to players and it comes about from physical conditioning. And broadly, physical conditioning prepares and ensures that our athletes are not prone to injury which is one of the broader aspects that um, is growing um, worldwide, where we're saying the time frame that we take um, from uh, an athlete who's been injured is mostly because of the time frame that has had been taken while we were preparing that athlete. So basically it means the shorter time you take uh, putting uh, the base for physical conditioning, it means you also, it also means it's the shorter time that you take um, making um, ways that are negatively going to affect the players, where you can find that after two or three games uh, through in, in a season, athletes are down because of injury. In injuries, it will be because of the short um, base of the time that you had taken physically conditioning the athletes. And it also makes the athletes to easily recover and easily get to full recovery in terms of the body needs. Um, and the body systems getting back to normal and delayed fatigue. So on that note, we have put in uh, what we call cont contemporary um, training parameters uh, when it comes to uh, physical fitness training. So contemporary, these are changes that really you will not specifically have to structure a training program that is physical to say, no, today we, are, we have a training program that focuses on them. But as you keep on uh, working on the physical, physical conditioning, you sort of also, um, in a way, get the results from, of these uh, parameters changing, where there's behavior change, where there's postural instability, that is in terms of the kinetic chain, where we're saying through the actions that are, you are repeatedly doing, in your training program, the athletes get to have the proper posture where you are not going to have a training se session for posture. Movement efficiency, core conditioning, and balance. So these are the content contemporary training parameters that we've just put in so that you get to know and you get to uh, be aware of them. As at times, it's important that you um, look out for them while you are physically training your team, are you also in a way recognizing um, a change in the contemporary parameters of your athletes? Is there anything changing in the behavior of your player? And then we have um, also now the ones where, which are trained, the ones which then form the basis where we have the cardiorespiratory fitness, which is um, the aerobic, which is divided into the aerobic and the anaerobic um, systems. And these um, mostly are the ones that make up the foundation of um, sports uh, efficiency, of sports uh, skills uh, to be able to be um, executed. Almost every individual has to have um, this fitness aspect. And then there are um, metabolic uh, markers as well. So we're saying the foundation will ease your body and the adaptation of the body after rest or at the beginning of ex ex exercises will um, make your body to get back to its normal state. So this is also from the result of, um, suppose the cardiorespiratory fitness, and then there'll be metabolic markers where as you can tell that your athletes, um, the demand for them eating higher is now high or some are losing appetite because they've started training and which is an, an effect of physical conditioning and it therefore should be um, taken note of. 
We have agility and coordination. Um, we'll later explain those reactivity, speed, power, muscular endurance, muscular strength, and flexibility. And these, we are going to go broader as we continue with um, the presentation. Right, so with physical conditioning, we have spoken about which uh, parameters. Please go back to the slide before. Okay. We've spoken about um, which ones they are. So we're saying now you need to perform assessments. It can vary um, from um, fitness trainers or coaches to coaches or teams to teams. But definitely when we're talking about physical conditioning programs, you have to assess um, your players. So which assessments are you going to do? When are you going to do them? How are you going to do them? Those are some of the questions that we need to address um, while we're doing our physical conditioning. When to address the foundation of imbalances for example, in posture and in movement. Do you wait to say, oh, maybe I need them to um, go halfway through the season while I'm doing my physical conditioning because now we're still at the base stage and I'll correct them later. Or do you say initially there are postural imbalances, there are movement imbalances. As you continue with your program, you address those. And then we also need to look at how to design, to modify, to progress, with fitness a training program and how then we periodize throughout um, the season. You have started your conditioning. Is it the same programs that you're going to apply during competition phase, during off season phase? So that's why we talk about the assessments that need to be performed. So um, the ACE integrated fitness uh, training model, um, it basically um, is divided into the function where we say the first part is um, when athletes come in, it's beginning of the season or you have new athletes that are just coming in. We have phase one where this phase mostly it's about um, stability, mobility and mobility training where we're putting in the base, the aerobic base of training. And um, phase two, we have the health aspect where we're moving into movement training and we're looking at aerobic efficiency training. When we're saying it's the health aspect, this is where now you're looking at them. They have now have the aerobic based training. Now you're looking at more of the aspects that are health wise are going to affect them when it comes to the sport of volleyball, where you're looking at saying such and such movements in volleyball that might cause an injury. So that's the movement training phase and the next phase is the fitness now they have the movement training then we go on to the fitness train, uh, training which you can start loading your athletes we can start moving on from um, aerobic training to anaerobic endurance training and normally this phase it links with the performance phase where you're doing mostly performance training but in this regard it's still physical conditioning that is re um, related to performance um, training. Next slide. Um, the functional movement and resistance training. Um, so firstly, it says re-establish function. When it says re-establish function, you're looking at um, if it's players who have been in a, in a season training and now they are coming back. So you're more like re, restarting. And then secondly, improve health. And then next you develop now from what has been built and you advance the fitness and you enhance uh, performance. This is a summary of the diagram that we had earlier on. So there are general um, exercise programming guidelines that we're also going to talk about. The frequency part when it comes to physical conditioning. When we talk about frequency, we're talking about how often, if we're talking about a certain aspect, how often are you doing that aspect? 
be it a week, be it a month, be it in a training program, a day training program, how often, and in that training program, how much time is going to be um, allocated to that. And then the intensity, how hard, how hard is that type of workout, the time, how long, and the type, what kind, if we're saying what kind, is it the kind that is working the lower body? Is it the kind that is working the um, upper body? Is it the kind that is working the core? And in all that, what are the volumes which will then result in you getting the intensity? And what are the sets? What are the patterns or the progressions? If we say the patterns or the progressions, do, are you starting from easy depending on the level of um, your players? Is it elite players? Is it high school players? Is it beginners? So when you're doing a physical conditioning program, all those aspects, um, they come into, um, into cognizance. But more so, how enjoyable are those aspects? Uh, most of the times, I, I believe we, we let our players down as the technical teams, where we make them believe, especially, especially physical conditioning, that physical conditioning should be this serious um, training session where athletes don't talk, where everything is just so serious. But um, I need to make you aware that everything that has to do with players, everything that has to do with us getting all the attention from our players, it has to be enjoyable so that we have gains when it comes to that. Next slide. Um, so the first phase that we spoke about, now we're getting deeper into the components that um, make up the integration part when we're physically conditioning is the aerobic uh, base training, which is, which is the cardiovascular uh, endurance. So this one is uh, basically said to be the ability of players, in this case, to do prolonged exercises with oxygen from moderate to high intensities. And normally you start with um, the low intensities and you're going up. So this um, will then basically have build up of the body where it's able to use the oxygen, where the athletes are able to sustain in the, in the whole game of volleyball, if it be it five sets, because of building this base of aerobic endurance training, it will make a build up that the athletes are able and we measure it in um, the maximum oxygen uptake. And it makes it even easier since volleyball is, an, is mostly um, anaerobic exercise. It then entails the recovery from anaerobic exercise. So if, if our athletes have got a good base of the aerobic um, training, when we're now recovering from the anaerobic um, part that would have um, covered in volleyball, this system, it makes it easier for us. Um, I'll hand over to Donald for the next slide. Okay, uh, good evening all. So the next pl slide is uh, cardiovascular endurance. So on the assessments, of the cardiovascular uh, sorry, endurance. Sorry, Donald. Uh, can you just pitch up your voice a bit uh, for the purpose of the recording? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Thank you. So, looking at the assessments of the cardiovascular endurance, we have got the 2.4 kilometer run test, uh, cardiorespiratory endurance, and muscular endurance of the legs, as well as the beep test. So these ones are now maximum tests. And as if you remember the um, ACE integrated fitness training model, it's a maximum test that has to be done in phase four and in phase three and phase four. All right, uh, next slide. Okay, so in my opinion, this is um, the most important uh, phase, stability and mobility. So if you remember, stability and mobility are in phase one of the ACE integrated fitness uh, model. So co-conditioning. 
the core uh, is vital for a player stability and allows transference of power efficiently from the lower body um, to the upper body. So in this uh, core conditioning, we look at uh, the McGill's torso test. So this endurance, um, muscular endurance test is uh, basically, it's not all about having um, a six pack, but basically it's having a stable core so that um, an athlete is able to transfer energy from the lower body up until the upper body. Okay, so basically what we're looking at with this um, endurance uh, torso test, we are looking at both sides, uh, the front part, um, we are looking at the, um, the back, and also we are looking at both sides. Okay, so looking at um, this um, endurance test, if you, it's a correct indicator, especially if you have uh, players having back pain. So what we're looking at here is a three-dimensional um, comparison of times. Say, for example, they do the side, uh, the side bridge endurance test, then they do the right side and left side, as well as the front and back. Okay, uh, next slide. All right, so this is the stability and mobility, muscular endurance as well, the ability to sustain performance, uh, resist fatigue, high intensity endurance, uh, maintaining high intensity muscular contractions uh, for long rallies, and a good posture, uh, injury prevention, optimized sports performance. So when you're looking at endurance, what we basically want to look at now is how do you train it? We're looking at sets, two to three. We're looking at reps, 12 plus. And then we limit the rest intervals for players so that we train the type one muscle fibers. And then the intensity is at 60 to 70% uh, one rep max. So in the slides to come, we're going to look at how to measure, um, how to get the percentage of the one uh, repetition max. Okay, next slide. Okay, so again, in the stability and mobility phase, that's still on phase one, uh, flexibility. So that's your the ability of a joint to move freely in its range of motion and uh, an enhanced joint flexibility that uh, reduces uh, injury risk, muscle balance, posture, and again, improve uh, performance. So usually what we want to talk about here is the relationship between when you're warming up, is it dynamic stretching? Is it um, uh, static stretching? So you'd want to do your dynamic warm up, especially when you're starting your um, activity. And then you'd want to finish with the static um, stretches whenever you are finishing. So for every session, um, especially if you have two training sessions in a day, uh, it's advisable that you do your static stretches in between those sessions. But if you have one session, you can do your dynamic session in the beginning, uh, do your endurance, and then you do your volleyball training. And then you make sure that you finish with a static um, stretching. Okay, next slide. All right, so load uh, and performance, uh, muscular strength. So this is mainly in the phase three and four. Um, a maximum amount of force during a specific movement pattern, uh, sports assessment using one repetition max. So now we're looking at uh, absolute strength, the greatest amount of weight uh, that can be lifted at once and the relative strength that um, takes the athlete's uh, body weight into consideration and used uh, primarily to compare individuals. So now what we're looking at is 
the relative strength you took you take your um one rep max you divide that by the athlete's body weight and then that's how you get your relative strength so when you're looking at the relative strength we are trying to compare uh, our players say you have got two players in the same position okay so a higher relative strength also now means that your player with the higher relative strength actually has um, a better advantage in terms of force production. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so muscular strength as we continue with uh, muscular strength. So as we said, it's um, phase three and phase four. So the assessments, you can do a one rep max for a bench uh, test. You can do a one uh, rep max for a leg press test. You can do a one rep max for a squat test. So you record your athlete's performance and use the results as a baseline against which to measure for the future. So now for your um, inexperienced athletes, you can actually predict um, their one rep max. So for example, if your athlete can lift, say, in a bench press, they can lift um, 60 kilograms for 12 reps, and then they get tired probably around the 11th and 8th. You can out, uh, actually... Uh, predict the one rep max. Uh, for example, if it's 60, that means that's 75% of your one rep max. So a one rep max, you can actually do with your experienced um, weightlifters. For example, you can have them lift, start off at 50% of their predicted uh, one rep max, go to 70 go to 85, go to 90, up until they can actually lift one weight that they can lift once and then they cannot lift any anymore. So you can do a maximum test for your experienced um, weightlifters or you can do a predicted one, uh, especially if you're doing with your inexperienced athletes. So one thing that is important is having uh, is having form over intensity okay next slide all right so now for the sports skill and uh, performance parameters we are talking of balance so remember in phase 1 we did uh, the static balance. Um, now you have power, anaerobic power and anaerobic capacity, uh, speed, agility, uh, reaction time and uh, coordination. Next slide. Okay. So now looking at power, the rate at which mechanical work is performed under a defined set of conditions power it's um, activity specific so that's work uh, over time so now we divide power into anaerobic power and anaerobic capacity so the difference now between anaerobic and aerobic if you notice phase one we do uh, aerobic that's with oxygen now that's without oxygen so now it's working on energy systems. So we are looking at that short burst of power. Uh, in, it's done in a very few, um, it's short time. So the, the, the power assessments, we are looking at standing long jump test. We are looking at the vertical jump test. We are looking at the medicine ball toss. So the standing uh, long jump, you do it at the start of your season because it's less impact than the vertical jump test that you now have to assess, especially your athletes when you want to now look at their maximum leg strength. And then the med ball toss for the men, you can use a 3 kg medicine ball. And then for the ladies, you can uh, use a 2 kg medicine ball. So this is now for your upper body. 
All right, for the next uh, slide, I'll hand over to my colleague, uh, Coach Memo. Okay, I'll hand over to catch Coach Memo for the next slide. Okay, so um, we're saying to improve uh, production of muscular force and power, right? Normally is um, in volleyball performance um, and through research, it has been shown that uh, the conditioning format of um, plyometric exercise is, um, is most um, important or it, it shows that um, it actually improves performance better. So the plyometric exercises, they make um, the ability to exert force in the short possible time to be better. And normally it's, some say it can be agility plus speed with the maximum strength, which will result in, in power. But then there's an influence of the vertical jump, which is very cold, um, complex here. Hence, they need to be coordination most of the times whenever you're getting into the phase of um, um, physically conditioning the players using a plyometric exercise, they, use, they need to be um, coordination, a coordination base, the balance um, that has been spoken about. Because these, they incorporate powerful movements that um, literally have um, a short uh, strengthening and lengthening uh, cycle of the muscle contractions, which we normally say is the eccentric and the uh, um, concentric muscle contractions. So we can have um, the exercises like um, the drops from the box. You can have exercises like um, the jumping jerks. You have exercises um, like um, the squat jumps. So all, all for your plyometric exercises. But one thing that is, for, is of key when you are um, doing physical conditioning is that it might not take the form that another team has taken, but basically what we're saying is all the aspects have to be properly trained for, all the aspects have to be uh, properly um, balanced in terms of how you train for them, in terms of how you build up the base for training them. Um, you know, at times uh, some, teams or some coaches or some, because people come from different um, places and from different parts of the world. Some may say, no, we, but we don't have a gym. Um, as we saw in um, most of the slides, the pictures that uh, my colleague um, in, in the screen was sharing, they show that that athlete was not in the gym, but all the exercises, they can actually be taken, um, they can be done even outside the gym. All you have to do is what should be done. And then that way you'll be able um, to structure your exercises. Um, next slide. So we also have um, the movement uh, pattern progressions uh, for velocity training, whereby we're saying uh, we're looking at um, the linear forward movements. And these movements, most of the times, they can be incorporated when it we come into phase three of um, training when now you're training for performance. And most of these um, are literally involved at times even in a training session. So we're saying we have moved now to a phase. We have moved now from a phase where we are doing um, only training of um, the components of aspect um, alone. Now we have moved maybe because it's towards competition time, we are now inclusive. Our physical conditioning is sort of um, in the training programs of um, the volleyball skills training. So where that's where things like linear movement patterns are coming in. Where in linear forward movements, we're talking, for example, of movements when uh, players are doing uh, the jump saves and those movements have to be trained for. How do you train for them? The lateral movements, the back pedal movements, the rotational movements, which are movements that include um, the spiker approach, the crossover cut, cutting and caving, which are block movements. So those are, have got physical demands. Those are um, certain aspects that need strength and at the same time, they need coordination. Next slide. 
So on um, power plyometric training, the frequencies, they are normally very low because we've said already that the intensities of um, plyometrics are very, very high. And normally it is important to consider certain factors, for example, points of contact. You have double to single leg drills where you're talking about if players are going to be doing uh, box jumps, are they landing on one foot? Are they landing on both feet? If players are going to be doing um, burpees, they are, they've got how many parts of the body um, at a certain point in time on the ground. We've got uh, a factor speed where we have faster movements which increase intensity more than slower movements. We've got the vertical height where the higher the, the body's center of gravity, the greater the impact upon landing. So whenever you see um, the intensity of plyometric jumps going up, so the higher they jump, it means when they come down, they are prone to injuries because the center of gravity was very high. And those are things that we need to take into consideration as well during our physical conditioning. The body weight of the athletes, our athletes vary in body size and shape. So the greater the athlete's weight, the more the intense on the drill and even the more the impact when they land. And also the complexity of the exercises. Are we using uh, certain parts um, of the body segments? Are we using all the parts of the, the, the muscular groups? Increasing balance, increasing the challenges. That is also an aspect that we need uh, to consider in physical conditioning. Next slide. And then we have um, the speed and agility in volleyball. So speed and agility, they are important for assessing speed and quickness and predicting athletes' uh, potential. So before um, the world of technology, we used to have uh, the T test, we used to have the shuttle test, we used to have the Elon, Elon test as the test that were used um, or are still used to, for, to, for speed and agility. But we're saying as we keep, as research keeps going on, we discover that these only measure um, speed in terms of change of direction. We can't really say they measure agility because when we talk of agility, we're talking about the reaction to a stimuli, which will then um, cause an athlete to move towards a certain direction. So nowadays, that's why you find that there are reactive agility tests where they can be um, lights that are set out. And when a light goes on, an athlete runs to touch that, that light. And that involves the part of um, the cognitive aspect. So we're saying as we keep doing our conditioning, let us also keep um, moving towards the current trends in what is happening now. If you're saying you don't have equipment, you can um, um, alternate this with where you just put cones of certain uh, colors and you can shout to the player to say blue, red, yellow, as compared to where they are doing a T test. Because when they are doing a test, it's more the movement is already um, predetermined. I'm going to go this direction, I'm going to go with that direction. But in volleyball, you never get to have a movement that is predetermined movements are always changing in reaction to what is happening uh, with the ball. So we're saying when it comes to speed and agility, let's be creative enough to um, make sure that we condition our athletes um, using all the, 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 the things or all the exercises that are going to be more game related. Next slide. Um, we have the agility ladder hurdles. These, they basically improve um, the movement that you are going to take when you are going towards the, um, towards the ball without the aspect of the cognitive um, state. So the duration, these normally they take up the shortest duration because they are of um, high intensity. And there's a variety of them that you can do forward, there's a variety of them that you can do lateral, like I said, uh, taking into cognizance the movements that are there in the volleyball court. Next slide.
right? Um, we've discussed um, all the components that are entailed when it comes to physical conditioning of volleyball. And we've um, said out the exercises that can um, be done, though this is not a system that every person has to use. All we're saying is physical conditioning is a very important aspect and it should be um, an integral part where you make sure that all the components, are, uh, the, the parameters are covered. And then when you all have those, you now plan them in a systematic way, which is called periodization. So you're saying you are progressively putting these into cycles of how you're going to then um, monitor that the athletes are doing them, of how you're going to train for these following a specific program for a specific uh, period of time. And uh, conditioning programs can use periodization to break up the training program into off season, like we said, where it can be the phase one, and then pre season, phase two, and then in season, which is phase three and phase four. Um, I'll hand over back to um, trainer Donald Skills. Uh, thank you very much, Coach. So, uh, what, when we look at uh, periodization, um, let's try to visualize, uh, for example, you can have an Olympic athlete who can have a four year micro cycle. So the one uh, cycle that we tried to do was a six months one uh, that takes into consideration most of our teams that are playing here. So you can now divide your uh, Macro cycle into two mesocycles of uh, three months each. And then you can now have a micro cycle of uh, two weeks. And then right there at the very, very bottom, now you have your training units. That, uh, those are your daily uh, training sessions. Okay, next slide. Okay, so there you have. Um, you have it this simplified. You have the phases of preparation. That's your pre-season preparation. You have your competitive. So when you look at the preparation and the competitive, now you have your goals are set there. You're starting with your athlete um, for starters, stability and mobility. Um, now you move up a uh, movement training. They can now do the big five. So the, your big five will be your squat, your lunge, your rotation, your pushing, your pulling exercises. And then when you look at the competitive part, that's when you go into your power sessions, your absolute uh, strength sessions. That's where you look your, at your plyometric training when you now know that your athletes have a solid base. And then I would want to point out that when you look at uh, your pre-season, your pre-season is usually four to six. Otherwise, if it's more than that, your athletes get into um, deep training. So now what you now need to do is have your athletes doing um, basic uh, physical fitness so that they maintain um, their fitness age so that when they start their season, they're in a position to start well. Okay, um, uh, next slide. Okay, so a linear periodization. Uh, basically, now what you're looking at is you have, uh, let's take, for example, your athlete who's doing a bench press. So for the linear part, you can have them for the entire first week, second week. They are lifting, say, 60 kgs, uh, multiply by 12 repetitions. That's on a Monday. They rest for uh, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday. They You add 5% because that's uh, what you would want to add safely to your athlete's um, intensity. That's the load. And then you have your athlete now lifting uh, 73. So... When you look at uh, linear periodization, um, let's go to the next slide so that we get um, a clearer picture of uh, what I'm saying. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so, uh, can you, sorry, can you go back to the uh, previous slide? Okay, so when you're looking at linear periodization, what you're basically looking at is you add um, your atlas load by 5%. Uh, that's for every microcycle. So if they're lifting 60 by 12, they do that for the entire week, 60 by 12, and then they do that for two weeks. In the third week, that's when now you add by 5% and then they continue uh, by 12. So now what you're looking at is, is if your athlete is now lifting, um, say 11 to 12 reps, and they can now lift for 12 reps um, without any problems, now you add by 5%. So what you're now doing here is just tempering now with volume and intensity. Okay, uh, next slide on the undulating. So this, in my opinion, is an ideal one because now what you're doing is you structure your session as Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Remember, we're talking of the bench press. So on a Monday, your athlete is doing, is lifting 60 uh, for 12 reps. And then on a Wednesday, after resting on Tuesday, now you add a 5%. Say now your athlete is lifting um, 72 kilos for eight reps now. And then on a Friday, you reduce the number of reps to four, but you now also add the intensity, you add the load. Now your athlete is lifting 81. You are also mimicking um, basically how we would want to get to uh, the maximum strength, the one repetition max. So now looking at um, our challenge, especially with time, if you look at um, um, us here so that we have one training session that's going to fit the physical preparation part as well as the volleyball uh, training. What you would do is the first 30 minutes of your session, you do your physical conditioning. So you would take uh, three exercises, and in this case, you'd say, for example, I would um, say for the upper body, you do your push-ups for 12 reps. You do two to three sets with uh, 60 seconds rest, right? After doing push-ups, your third exercise would be the bench press. Um, again, you do a bench press, you have your athlete lifting, say, 75% of their one rep max, they lift uh, for eight to 12 repetitions, uh, they rest for 60 seconds, and then you add a power exercise, that's where you do a med ball a rotational throw or a med ball chest pass. So they do again two to three sets, but now you add um, more rest in between because when you're looking at power, intensity is high, they would need at least two to three minutes in terms of recovery. So this session, if you look at it, it's trying to make use of that little time that we have. Also, you don't exhaust your athlete because now what you're doing is we're preparing our athlete for the volleyball skills that are coming in. So for any coach, I would tell you, if you're starting any training session, you'd want your players already executing the maximum jump in their first uh, warm-up spiking if um, you are now spiking. So this session is not meant to exhaust them, but just to prepare them for the volleyball um, skills that are coming in. That's preparing their the neuromuscular system, their nervous system. So if you're looking at a sample for Say, for example, the lower body, they can start with uh, walking lunges. That's exercise one. You do eight to 12 repetition. And then you do a lunge, a rotation with a medicine ball. 
and then in the end um you then put a single leg um, medicine bow slam so that's three exercises that they can do so if you try to now calculate how much time you'd use um, you'd notice that this session will be plus or minus 20 minutes your athletes get uh, some rest maybe five to ten minutes they start their dynamic stretches and then straight into volleyball training you'd notice that your players who start on a higher note than what they usually do, especially if you don't start with um, um, your, 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 your gym sessions, your physical condition. Okay, next slide. I'm sure that's the end of our presentation. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, Coach Memo, if you have anything. Um, there was a question here that says, um, thank you for uplifting presentation. Coming back to one of the first slides where you wrote uh, playing volleyball requires 10% of needs of force. Is it true? Where did you get this from? Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I suppose um, you are referring to the demand profile that we presented earlier on. Uh, the demand profile we said it's more like a sample it was just a sample just to present to say the demand profile is something that will you will make as the technical team to say we are going to have um, a contribution of aerobic endurance 10 percent because it will then help you to structure um, the periodization that uh, coach skills is from talking about to say in a season how often are you going to train your endurance it's going to come from the demand profile. If you think as a, um, as a coach or as a trainer, if you think that according to you in the game of volleyball, um, aerobic uh, endurance contributes 10%, speed contributes 20%, it will help you in the structure. So um, that is not uh, really a research thing. It was just a demand profile that we used as an example. But I, I apparently understand that there should be um, research that is taking on. Um, I'm not sure if it's uh, USA or I, I'm not sure, but I, I um, am aware that there is research to actually find out the demand contribution percentage of the components of fitness in volleyball. To say in volleyball, do we think it's more 15% uh, speed, 20% uh, strength, but the one that we used today, it was for the purposes of this presentation so that you are clear that when you're training, you're not going to train aerobic endurance um, like you're gonna train power or strength there are other components um, of fitness that uh, will seem to take a priority over others uh, because of their contribution when it comes to the game. Okay, thanks, Coach Memo. Uh, I think we'll hand over back to Sharif to, to handle the, the, the question and answer. Coach Sharif? <coughs> okay, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, we we agree, Enzo, that we, we will we will give uh, uh, HP the the, uh, the the ability to to ask the question. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll we'll bring him on board, and you we'll ask, the, uh, you ask the question. I mean, I mean. Uh, okay, uh, there was we, one. Uh, there was one HP. Yes, yes, we have we have one here. Uh, from HP. Yeah, you can ask the question. He, he, she can we, ask the question. We will give him the floor. Okay. Uh, he said that. Uh, okay, it's, thank it's you. Atangana. Mm -hmm. He's Sorry? ready to ask. He's ready? Yes, please give him the floor, please. Hi. Hello. 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 Can you hear Not me? In Ghana. Yes, 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 please. Go ahead. Thank you for thank you for your uplifting uh, presentation. I heard the uh, memory dube in one of the first slide, and uh, I wrote I read some somewhere that. Uh, Volleyball needs uh, 
10% of uh, strength in one of the first light. And my question is, uh, where do you, where do you got this uh, percentage from? And uh, as we know that uh, playing volleyball requires overcoming of uh, external uh, resistance and therefore developing more strength. What do you think we can, uh, we can do to, to upgrade or to up upgrade this 10 percentage? Okay, uh, thank this you, Mr. This is the Mr. first question. And uh, the last one is, uh, what advices can you give us when we have a short period of uh, uh, preparation? Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Mr. HP, for your question. Um, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay. So I said um, that was a, a demand profile that I used for the purposes of this presentation to show that, for example, if you are a coach, you need to come up with an idea, your idea for your team to say in your team, like you have said, if you feel like, no, for me, strength in volleyball would contribute 30% during a game. So it will then help you in terms of structuring when you're now doing the periodization stage. It will then help you to say, how much of the aerobic endurance do I need? So we are saying that percentage is not a percentage that is from research. That percentage is a percentage where as um, trainers, we are saying there is a demand profile, but the demand profile is determined by us according to what we feel can help our team to, be, to best get to high performance. And then I said, I will use an example of one aspect that I know, for example, aerobic endurance, which we know that aerobic endurance in volleyball, it's not really much but aerobic endurance is needed for every base in terms of athletic performance, in terms of all the other perform uh, sports performances, in terms of even health, fitness, aerobic base is needed. So because it's needed, we need a certain percentage. So that is not really a, a documented, that was just a guideline to say, this is how you could one could distribute them so that I know that when we get to periodization, I need my team to have 10% of this or 15% of this. And then um, the next question that you said, um, it was about external resistance needed in volleyball. Um, um, please correct me, you are talking about, when you're talking about external resistance, are you talking about still in the components of fitness strength or you're talking about Because if, if it's in the strength aspect, if I understand it according to strength, um, that's where um, Coach Skills explained that um, we need a program of strength training, which will start most of the times during conditioning phases. Uh, you'll find that depending on the levels of the athletes, sometimes you can start with own body weight, as we may have athletes that cannot use um, resistance training because of their age. And then we have um, the elite athletes, so external resistance then depends on the level. And then that's when um, you then get to um, how big are your loads now? What are you using in relation to a particular player? So you've got a player so-and-so who's uh, maybe 10 feet tall, um, which is one point something in height. What is their weight? So that weight is in relation to each and every player. It's not all the players because we're training strength who are going to use the same weights because there has to be a resistance cool. training. Different players are going to use um, uh, different um, resistances when it comes to that. I got the, I got the answer because my, 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 my question was related to the 10 percent. So now I get, I get, okay. I got the answer. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Hey guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Atangana. Uh, I, I think the, the next question coming from Sam. Uh, consider the weight of the athlete 
when dealing with plyometric exercise, especially on vertical jump and how many reps per set when working with elite athletes. Uh, coach, you froze a bit there. Can you just come back? Or oh, if they got the question, you froze just a bit. Do you, do you, ask, do you need to repeat the question? Yes, please. Okay. Again. Uh, uh, Sammy Mulengi from Kenya. Uh, he is asking, do we consider the weight of the the weight of the athlete when dealing with plyometric exercise, especially on vertical jump, and how many reps uh, uh, per set when working with elite athletes? Okay, um, thank you. Can I take that, Coach Memo? Yes, go ahead. Okay, um, definitely in plyometric exercise, you have to consider. Um, the weight of the athlete. So in my team, um, I had a challenge. Uh, most of the time, is if you look at most of the left-sided attackers, you tend to have uh, players jumping and landing on the left foot most of the time. So at times, especially mid-season, I would get three or four of my outside hitters, the left-side attackers, um, getting knee injuries. So the first thing that you have to do is um, first you have to be careful of their weight. So their weight has to be constantly monitored. And then whenever they can now control their body weight, now you can then um, start doing uh, plyometric uh, exercises safely. And also what you now need to do is your boxes, you can work with, um, especially on the box jumps, first have them land on top of the box before you have them jump from the box uh, going down. Use a 30 centimeter box, progress to a 45 to 50 centimeter box, progress to even a one uh, meter box, especially as they get comfortable, especially carrying their own weight. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, co uh, Coach, uh, we have uh, a, a question. It's in French, and Marco said you'd want to contribute by answering that question. You saw it, Sheriff? Yes, yes, I can see it. Uh, I think uh, uh, if Marco would like to uh, to contribute, no problem. Welcome. Welcome, Marco. Yeah, not not good. Yeah, that, that's the problem. I have uh, some problems with my device here. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, better, better, better. Yes. Now I cannot hear you guys. Sheriff, can you hear me? It's okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I I would like to say that uh, I'm very I'm very impressed with. Uh, everything that was uh, spoken in this presentation because it's very useful first of all it's very useful because organization is everything organization and science the science must be uh, used it for <laughs> to help us in our preparation we are talking about something very specific and very difficult so everything that was uh, spoken, uh, I believe that it's, it was very useful. Um, so uh, one thing that I, I would like to ask is something, because I have seen uh, lately, I have seen coaches and uh, physical trainers that they don't use too much uh, aerobic conditioning. I, be, I remember that about 20 years ago, we used to, to work a lot to the aerobic conditioning to get prepared for the next step, that is, uh, which is the anaerobic conditioning. And uh, why, why you believe that it's, it's happening 
I don't know if it's because it can injure, you can uh, uh, injure the knee. They, they, I, I can understand why uh, we we stop to use the aerobic aerobic conditioning uh, in the phase one, for example, or in the phase two. Can you answer me that? Um, um, I believe. Um... I share the same sentiments as you. I believe aerobic conditioning makes up the base of, um, of training. It makes up the base. Yeah. If we don't have, if our athletes don't have proper aerobic conditioning, um, I believe we will not be able to get to the strength level, will not be able to get to the power level. What I believe though that we should do is to make them diverse. Nowadays, we've got uh, the treadmill, we've got a different way of achieving that. So instead of us getting rid of the I believe we just need to just make it enjoy or enjoyable. Remember what we say, the main aim is for us to be able to um, carry out the principles of physical conditioning so that at the end of the day, we achieve performance. So I, I wouldn't agree to um, whether it's scholar articles or whatever it is that says we should get rid of aerobic endurance. Because for me, the minute we, be, we remove aerobic endurance, remember anaerobic endurance scientifically as well has got, um, um, what do I say, negative results that are like lactic acid accumulation or that are like short-term injuries. So I said in, the, um, one, in one of my first slides, I said the shorter your physical conditioning, if you're shortening it, you're also shortening um, your players getting to an injury. So it means in a season, like I said, after two or three games, because your aerobic endurance was less, before a few games, your players will have injuries. So I believe it, we, we, we do not need to really remove it. We need to alternate what are we doing? What activities are we doing so that we see that we benefit from it? Okay, uh, uh, Marco, could you please uh, let me uh, give you also my opinion. Uh, first of all, we have to, to, to make the difference between uh, beach volleyball and volleyball, because in volleyball, we need uh, uh, aerobic, okay? Uh, more than, uh, uh, in, in beach volleyball, we need aerobic more than uh, volleyball. And in volleyball, I think, uh, 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 memory said a very good thing, and no, you will not achieve, you will not arrive to the, uh, uh, the anaerobic before you, you make the base of aerobic in the beginning. And my, I, I would like to add for her also, uh, according to the season and the periods, you can also work again during the season for developing the aerobic. Uh, according to, to your program, because maybe you have uh, three competitions and you have uh, different times and so on, you can work on it. On the other side, our uh, in volleyball now, we, call, we consider it uh, the game under 20, 10 seconds. That's why uh, in, in volleyball, it's a little bit different from beach volleyball. Uh, in, in volleyball, we need the under 10 seconds because all our movements now, uh, uh, going to 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 use uh, or to move to move under 10 seconds. Uh, if we are going to spike and return to make one defense and go again to spike, it's the, all the the rally or all the movement will be under 10 seconds. Uh, on the other side, um, I believe that without uh, uh, aerobic, uh, I mean base, we are not able to achieve in uh, in any other. Uh, I mean, uh, factor in physical fit. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Marco, do, do you need to to have more uh, uh, more uh, from yes. more more comments? Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, I agree. I agree, and then I believe that uh, beach volleyball and volleyball it's. Uh, an aerobic sport. So uh, for this system to be well prepared, the aerobic system must be working very well. That's the, this is so important. So another question that I have 
is uh, how long do you believe uh, to be able aerobically? How long do we need to be to uh, to get uh, well prepared aerobically? Four weeks, eight weeks. What do you think? Well, um, can I answer that? Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Marco, for the question. So when you're looking at um, the ACE IFT model, so you look at those components, they, um, in, they are, it's a continuum. So what I'm saying is you don't have to be um, maybe as too specific on, say, for example, the first two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Because when you look at um, looking at the aerobic endurance, we talked about the beep test, we talked about the 2.4. Those are tests that you should be doing even at the end of the, um, of the season towards uh, your competition. So specifically to say uh, you need to start here and end there, um, it's not exactly that. And then looking also on when to start i think it's all about how creative we are so what i would do is having those uh, plyometric exercises uh, power exercises and then in between as rest intervals players can jog uh, develop their aerobic uh, endurance there as a recovery so that way you're actually incorporating both power both strength with aerobic endurance and also, just an addition as well, we, as volleyball players, they work um, carrying their body weight. I would also want to incorporate swimming. I would also want to incorporate uh, spinning, that cycling, so that we at least get to relieve their joints of their weight. So looking at that, I would say, let's do aerobic um, training throughout the season. Let's use it for recovery at the beginning. Let's use it as a workout. And then at the end, let's use it as they recover. Thank you. Okay, also, uh, I would Should like to add, well. just one second, Mohammed. one second, please. Uh, I would like to add for, for uh, a comment for the, the previous question that now during the, during the, 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 the modern volleyball, in volleyball, we are uh, uh, developing uh, in uh, aerobic uh, with using the ball. I mean, uh, some drills with the ball and like uh, wash games, but uh, with a, a special uh, conditions uh, to to develop uh, uh, aerobic uh, with the ball with uh, a six six versus six. I mean, with the game life, and uh, that's why I mean it's a kind of uh, using developing the, the, the aerobic uh, system but with touching the ball without uh, leaving the, the touching the ball during the training session to, to help players also to, to make like it's a recreational uh, part and also on the other side we don't like to miss touching the ball in modern volleyball okay thank you Mohammed please I'm just coming back to the, this uh, this uh, immortal question. And I would like to add that uh, uh, first of all, we should uh, we should take the principle of the, the specificity of the sports. Many studies uh, this last uh, ten years was made around the volleyball, around football, handball. Uh, should we uh, privilege uh, aerobic preparation and aerobic preparation when the, the, the game is, as uh, Sherif said, that it's under ten seconds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there is uh, different uh, lectures. And one of the lectures is that, uh, the, let's say the general preparation when we are speaking about the aerobic aspects, that it's uh, within, uh, it's within the training when we are uh, coming to train, I mean to train daily on daily basis. So we are developing such capability and such capacity. There is no, uh, no need to make specific sessions for that because it's included. And I just remember a study from uh, Jill Cometti, one of the best uh, physical preparators uh, in the world. And he made, uh, he made just a, a study uh, for football. 
he realized that during the game, the 1990 uh, minutes, some players, they, met, they made around 80 speeds of less than 10 meters. And he realized that after that, the study is, is in French, unfortunately, I have it in French, but in English. And they realized that they have to reconsider this uh, general preparation as, I mean, endurance, etc. So the endurance is not a platform based on what we will uh, put speed, uh, stress, etc., etc., etc. No, it is included. And that's why actually for, for many sports, we are trying now to readapt the training session according to the volume of the matches. Let's say in, in beach volleyball, we have let's, uh, an average of 37 until 42 minutes of a game match. So the training shouldn't uh, exceed 55 minutes a session. So just, it, it just remark, I mean, what I mean, uh, it just, uh, we need uh, to be carefully, to go carefully on that, that, uh, that way. And we need to see which kind of studies uh, are on the market actually, in order to be really accurate on that when we are training our kids. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Memory, thank you, uh, Donald, for this presentation. It's a great benefit, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, guys, I, I need to, to give the floor to Tolani, uh, one of our uh, African instructors in volleyball. Uh, Tolani Mafuza, are you ready to, to give your question, please? Tolani, please uh, uh, unmute your microphone, please. Okay, thank you, Sheriff. Uh, uh, may I? the colleagues to maybe elaborate more on the differences by player positions if there's any variation in training uh looking at building the the capacity of uh you know the different elements the strength the power uh, you know as well as agility and or if you can maybe just briefly give us that overview thank you Tulani. uh memory or donald are you ready to, to reply, please? Okay. Um, first and foremost, I think it is important not to separate a team of volleyball players. That way we might lose a lot of things if we start by um, um, specifying in terms of the position when it comes to physical conditioning. I think when it comes to physical conditioning, let's understand that there are basic principles. For example, the test where everyone has to go through a test and if we're saying um, a volleyball player uh, through uh, maybe research has to do um, up to level 11 of the beep test, it means every volleyball player before we even get to position. So when we get to positioning, then I believe it's at a later stage where maybe we're looking at players who are on a short fall. So the most basic thing with team sports is use the standard for that particular sport. And then when we then get to the nitty gritties of player positioning, those ones mostly they are covered for when we're now doing um, skills training, the physical conditioning that is more related also to skills training, where you will find um, in your drills, you will definitely have uh, the center, block is, center blockers having more vertical jump training because now there's the ball aspect that is uh, involved. Um, where you're going to have the libero having a lot of agility workouts in a training session. So remember we said the skills, the, the physical conditioning also gets to a phase where it is linked with our skills training now, the skills parameters. So when it then comes to positional playing, it is then now related um, more to skill training. However, the only time where we are particular about the differences is when we are doing things like strength that will relate to the stature of that individual person. I hope you are answered, Coach Maposa. Thank you, Sheriff. I'm answered. Okay, okay. Uh, Tulani, thank you very much. And uh, Mohammed, are you here, please?
from the, okay we we have uh, uh, another question we have uh, thank you for making uh, this platform possible how do you prefer uh, the players mental capacity for a match and also how would you have players switch back on after several errors during i think it's not uh, related to the the, the uh, the subject today, uh, we will not, uh, uh, I mean, uh, answer this question. Uh, I think now uh, we have a French question. I don't know if Hameda is here. Mohamed. Okay. Uh, yes, 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 sir. Yes, please, could you please reply the, the, or, or tell us the, the question in French? What is the question, first of all? A question and uh, answers. Comment planifier le fitness training lorsqu'on a une saison à deux phases compétitives? So how we can how we can plan our uh, fitness training when we have uh, two two competition phases during the uh, the, the season? Okay, can, can I take that, Coach Memo? Yes, go ahead, Coach. All right, um, what you want to look at now is if you have your mesocycle, say you have um, your first mesocycle, you do your assessments maybe in the first um, mesocycle, and then you do your training session with the target of having, say, um, at the end of the first mesocycle, that's where you're going to have your competition. So. It now depends now on your mesocycle, how long is it? So for example, what do you want to um, concentrate more on? So the challenge here would be time. So what I would do is, if you're looking at your agility exercises, you try to combine your agility exercises with your, your technical drills. For example, using a ladder and then defending. So you need also to combine your physical conditioning with your volleyball training sessions. That's you take um, maybe one to two uh, exercises, you combine them, um, one to three exercises, sorry. And then you do that for 30 minutes, they rest for five minutes, and then they do volleyball training. And then now you try to combine your ladder drills, your corn drills, with um, your bow skills. Thank you. Thank you. Donc, euh, euh, le plus important dans cette, cette situation, quand on a uh, une saison à deux, à deux phases compétitives, donc il faudrait juste uh, essayer d'équilibrer les mésocycles. Donc, uh, on va dire que uh, uh, à la fin du mésocycle, normalement, il va y avoir un assessment, il va y avoir une évaluation. Mais pour ce cas-là, dans, dans ce cas-là, ça va être, le, on va dire, la première phase de compétition. Donc, il serait préférable dans cette situation-là, notamment dans la deuxième phase, il serait préférable euh, justement de combiner le travail physique avec le travail technique. Donc, c est, c est, la séance, elle ne va pas être une séance indépendante, mais une séance combinée euh, durant laquelle donc, on va faire un travail, euh, on va dire, euh, d'une trentaine de minutes, un travail physique d'une trentaine de minutes. Donc, il a donné l'exemple de l'agilité. Et puis donc, il va y avoir un, une phase de repos de cinq minutes. Et donc, on reprend le ballon, on reprend le, le travail technique. Donc, c'est beaucoup plus une question de comment gérer le temps et surtout comment gérer donc, cet aspect-là. Pas une séance individuelle ou spécifique, mais beaucoup plus dans, euh, la, la, dans le travail technique. Voilà. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you uh, for the question and the answer. Uh, I think with us now, uh, Joel Matthew, uh, our African instructor, and also he is the, uh, one of the coaches commission member. And I think he, he has a question. Uh, please, uh, Joel, if you are here, help us, please. And uh, we are waiting for your question, please. Joel. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for a very 
uh, educative and informative presentations. Uh, I, 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 I completely agree with the, most of the, the, the contents shared. Uh, and uh, it's, it's quite relevant for us uh, uh, in volleyball and specifically that you give us the basic foundations what we, we, we need to observe as coaches. Uh, in, in, as coaches, sometimes we, 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 we want to ensure maximum performance by, by, by loading uh, players uh, at the best of our ability without observing fatigue and signs that can cause uh, injuries. Uh, I just want to, to ask you a questions from your expertise point of view. Uh, what are the, the relevant the observations we need to, to, to take as coaches in terms of awaiting uh, overloading players and that can uh, lead to, to injuries? I hope my question is clear. Um, coach Skills, can I go ahead? Yeah, you can go ahead. Um, if I heard you properly, um, I believe we we're going back to the whole presentation where we're saying if we give them the right base, where we're saying um, one of the slides where we presented, where we said how, why, which, and when, it will then later on get to the frequency, the intensity to say, remember we said physical conditioning is um, a continuum, something that goes on even up to the time that we are at competition level, but it's now how we will structure our intensities. So in order for us to avoid that, first things first, I would encourage um, coaches, I would encourage teams to get the know-how of all those things that we've presented about. When I say the know-how, get to understand what are the demands in volleyball. If you understand the demands, it's easy for you to then structure the training sessions. It's easy for you to get the information that if we're playing a game tomorrow, I can't do plyometric jumps today. Otherwise, my players will be overloaded. Otherwise, my players will, will, will be needing a recovery day. So the first thing that I encourage us as Africans is that we need to get more knowledge when it comes to how we train our athletes regarding physical aspects and physical conditioning. And you also need the calendar, the periodization that we spoke about. It is mostly the one that is going to help you to know what are you doing at what time. So that way you are then um, uh, curbing before. It's more like a preventative measure for injuries. Like I said, part of the benefits of conditioning is um, so that our players don't have injuries. However, suppose you have uh, a player that is now injured something has gone wrong, at times we may miss it, or maybe because of posture, a player may miss it and they have an injury. You also have to now restructure when it comes to the training for that particular player, which then takes us to a phase that we said is the rehabilitation phase when it's in, in, under physical conditioning, where you're now going back with that athlete to restart the training. First, you let them recover, and then you restart everything. I hope you answered, Mr. Joel. But yes, also, thank you. So you, sorry, if I want, if I want to add on a bit, also you need the tests. The, the tests normally they will help you to 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 uh, show the signs of injuries, to show the signs of where you are. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, guys, uh, I think we don't have more questions. Uh, I think uh, it was a great webinar, uh, uh, a very successful one, and I'm very uh, proud that we have now more and more uh, people to help us to support uh, our development in, in Africa. Also, I'm very proud that we have, we had with us today or tonight, uh, one of the, the legends in, in beach volleyball, uh, our brother uh, Marco, and he, I mean, I'm, I'm, I believe that he is uh, now one of us, one of, from Africa. I consider him now, I'm, I'm, we are with
waiting for him. Jewel uh, Matthew joined us today, tonight, and I believe he's one of the builders also in, in developing coaches and uh, people in Africa, in volleyball and beach volleyball. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank everybody. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ben Hameda. I would like to thank Enzo. I would like to thank Hisham. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Alwani and Waida, Tarek and Tarek. And I think uh, we are on the way, uh, uh, I think, to develop and to, to gain more information. And I think we, uh, uh, we are working very hard. Everybody is doing his best to, to, to be here. But I have only one uh, remark. Uh, I'm, I'm inviting uh, all coaches to continue joining us because, by the way, today uh, uh, we don't have a lot of coaches uh, like other uh, webinars. That's why, I mean, uh, of course, uh, uh, it's a, a, a very specific one, but it's very important uh, uh, sector in, in, in our sport. And I think it's one of the, the the weak points uh, of our sport in Africa. We need to, to, to work more for that. Uh, and also, I need also to, to, uh, to say to everybody in Africa that this is the way to develop yourself. You have to join us. You ha we, have, we are waiting for you for the next webinar. We are working very hard to prepare these webinars <coughs> for you. And uh, at the end, uh, thank you for everybody, and uh, see you later. Uh, I think we will have uh, like a, a period of of, uh, we, of I mean holiday because we have Islamic uh, feast uh, uh, after two days, and I think uh, we will return in August uh, with a big surprise, and sure the next surprise also Mark will join us. Uh, Marco will join us because it will be a surprise also for him, okay? And I'm waiting for everybody to join us. Uh, and thank you very much for everybody, okay? Thank you. We are finished now. Thank you. By the way, I would like thank to thank you. also at the end uh, uh, Zone 6 because she made the initiative. He, she, she, she did what uh, other zones uh, uh, not yet did. I mean. We are waiting for other zones. We are we will push them to to have the same initiative, and we are waiting for them in our competition to develop volleyball in Africa. And beach volleyball. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. And beach volleyball before volleyball. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>